Hi there, this is Math 8, Unit 4, Lesson 7, called All Sum or No Solutions. It says let's think about many, how many solutions an equation can have. How many can they have? Alright, so which one doesn't belong? First of all, we took a look at these equations here. We have to decide which one doesn't really fit or work with the pattern here. We notice on number one, they both have a 5 and a 7, a 5 and a 7, so that seems to be okay. Here we have 5 times 7 and 7 times 5. That works out to be the same. No problem there. 7 minus 5 is equal to 2. So 2 has a value of 2. That's going to be okay. No problem there. And over here, 5 minus 7 is actually negative 2. And 7 minus 5 is positive 2. And those cannot be equal, actually. So we would say that this one does not belong. It just doesn't quite work out when you actually do the math. In section 2, we have a series of equations here. We have about eight equations here to talk about their solutions. And it says to sort these equations into two types, true for all values and true for no values. So true or basically not true, like it'll work or it won't work. So example, for the first one, <coughs> for n equals n, this would be true for all values, right? We can make n equal to any number we want, and because it's on both sides of the equal sign, it would work for any value of n we chose. Over here, we have 2t plus 6, and if we distribute this out, this becomes a 2t plus 6 as well. So again, they're equal on both sides of the equal sign. We have the same exact expression on both sides of the equal sign. So this would be true for any number uh, n or t we choose. Okay. On this one, we distribute, we have 3n, and then 3 times 1 is actually 3. So 3n plus 3 equals 3n plus 1. Now if you think this through, these would be eliminated and would 3 actually equal 1? No, it wouldn't. So no matter what value we put in there, we're not going to ever have a solution for there. So it's not going to be true for, for any number we could select. Down over here, if I multiply everything by 4, multiply by 4, I'm left with 20d plus 4 equals 20d. Now again, the problem here is that I have the 20d's that go away and I'm left with this 4. Okay, that's a problem. So that means there's not a number we could put in with a D that's going to make that 4 magically go away. It's not connected to anything. So we say it's not true. It's true for no values. No values make it true. On this next one on the top here, we have 5 minus 9 plus 3x and negative 10 plus 6 plus 3x. Again, <coughs> the 3x's cancel each other out. So you're left with negative 10 plus 6, which is negative 4. And 5 minus 9 is a negative 4 as well. <coughs> so you have negative 4 plus 3x and then a negative 4 plus 3x. I'm missing real quick. 5 minus 9, negative 4, negative 10 plus 6, negative 4. So that looks like it would be true for all of them. On my notes I wrote down not. I'm not sure why I wrote that down. Because 5 minus 9 is negative 4, negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4, 3x, 3x, it's going to be balanced on both sides. We're okay. Over here, the x's go away. We can't say that a half equals a third. That would be a not true. And here we have 6 times 3, a negative 6 times negative 3, which is a positive 18. So we have 18y. And here we have 18y as well. So that's going to be balanced on both sides. That would be true. And here we have a 2 and a negative 2. That would not be true. Okay? So what we're looking at really is trying to set it up so that we have equal values, uh, equal expressions, and the equal sign actually means equal. So on this one, it says write the other side of the equation so, that, so the equation is true for all values of u. We want to write something that would be basically the same. So we could write something like, and there's different options here, I could distribute and say 6u minus 12 plus 2, and distribute that out and rewrite it there. That's going to be true for all values of u. I could also rewrite that as 6u minus 10 and take it a step further, and even though they don't look the same, it would be true for all values of u. This is just probably the easier way of writing that down. If I want to make one that's not going to be true for all values of u, or for no values of u, then I need to set it up so that I have a 6u, right? That works out okay. And then over here, I end up with a minus 10. I could do a minus, in this case here, I could do minus 6 plus 2 instead of the minus 12. That's going to result in something completely different, and I'm going to have the six U's cancel out, but the numbers aren't going to be able to cancel out, so it's not going to work there. Let's look at the next section. <coughs> All 
All right, 7, 3. <laughs> what's the equation? We're going to skip this part right here. We're going to do the what's the equation, 7, 3. Complete each equation so that it is true for all values of x. We want it to be true for all values of x. In order for that to work, we need to pick a number here that it's going to match this side over here. So here I have 3x plus 6. And here if I distribute, I have 3x. And I want to multiply by a number so I end up with a 6 there. So in this case here, 3 times what number is going to give you 6? We would say 2. 3, to, 3 times 2. We can put a 2 right there. For here, I have x minus 2 on this side. So here's my negative x. And I'm going to distribute the negative throughout. That becomes a positive x. So I need to come up with a negative 2. If I put a 2 right there, a negative times a positive would be a negative 2. And that's my solution there. So I have a 2 for a, a 2 for b. Now over here, if I divide this out here, let's think this through, okay? This becomes 15 divided by 5x becomes 3x, and then negative 10 over 5 becomes negative 2. So I want to have a number that goes there, and so I can just simply take the 3x and put it right there and say, let's call it 3x, and we're good to go. For the other ones, on number two, we will look for ones that have, no values are going to work. So any other number we choose could work so it's the same equation. So instead of putting a 2 here, I can put a 4 there, and it's not going to work because that's going to become a 12 being equal to 6, and that just won't work there, will it? Over here, I could say, again, I could say 3, and that won't work because I'd say negative 2 equals negative 3, and that's not going to work. And again, over here, any number I want, I could say 5x, and that won't work because 5x minus 2 is not going to equal 3x minus 2. It's just not going to be the same. We're going to have an issue there, and it's just not going to work. Okay? So that's the idea there. So describe how you know whether an equation will be true for all values of x or true for no values of x. If it's all true, then <laughs> we're going to have equivalent expressions on each side. Okay? If it's not true, or no values, then we will have, um, they will be not equivalent expressions. Okay? So in summary, an equation is a statement that expresses that two expressions have an equal value. Okay? So an equation is a statement that two expressions have an equal value. And that's what we're looking at today. So let's take a look at your homework here. So I'll go ahead and do your homework, press pause, come back, press play. Let's see how you do. <laughs> Number one, for each equation, decide if it's always true or never true. So for this first one, we can eliminate the x's. So would we say that negative 13 can equal 1? We would say never. That's never going to work out. Over here, the x's are balanced. They go away. So can a half ever equal negative half? Nope, never. <laughs> here, we distribute. We have a 2x plus 6, right? Let's write this over again. 2x plus 6 equals, let's combine, 5x minus 3x equals 2x plus 6. Is that going to work? Yes, that's going to work there because it's balanced expressions are going to be equivalent. Over here, let's group some things together. We have x minus 3, but here I have a negative x and a 2x. That is the same as a positive x, and I still have a minus 3. So x minus 3 equals x minus 3. Yes, that's going to be true. And over here, let's distribute. Again, we have 3x minus 15 equals, here I have 2x minus 10 plus x. So those x's can combine to make 3x, right? So 3x's are going to go away, but can negative 15 equal negative 10? Never. And that's how we do that one. Number two. May says the equation 2x plus 2 equals x plus 1 has no solution because the left-hand side is double the right-hand side. Do you agree or disagree? Well, let's take a look. Right now, what we've been saying is we want to get the expressions to be equivalent, and that is true. But... Let's take a look at what happens if we try to solve this out. If I try to solve this and do minus x over here, I have x on this side. If I subtract 2 from both sides, I have 
one minus two equals minus one, and x equals minus one. That is an actual solution to this problem, which means it's not that it has no solution, there is exactly one solution to this problem. So we would disagree with May in this example here. Number three, write the other side so that's true for all values. So we take a look at what we have here. Um, you might want to distribute first to just kind of take a look at what you have. A half times 6x is the same as 3x. A half times a negative 10 is the same as minus 5. And then we have a minus x over here, right? So this can be written out as, we can rewrite this, you can leave it as 3x minus 5 minus x. Or we can group it up and say it's 2x minus 5. And that would work out just fine, okay? If I want to say no values of x would work, I could keep the 2x the same as it is because the x value won't make a difference. But if I just change this to a plus 5, for example, now I'm going to end up with plus 5 being equal to minus 5. That's just not going to work out. Number 4. Here's an equation that's true for all values of x. 5 times that equals that. Elena saw this equation and says she can tell that 20 times x plus 2 plus 31 equals 4 times 5 times x plus 10 plus 31 is also true for any value of x. How can she tell? So we're looking at what the difference is here. Okay, now take a look. First of all, this one has a 5 on the outside that we're going to distribute all the way through, and this one has a 20. The difference between 5 and 20 is that you're multiplying by 4. That's the difference there. So as long as I multiply by 4 on the other side, I'm going to be okay. I started off with 5x plus 10. Here's the 5x plus 10, and what do we do with it? She multiplied by 4. So that's going to be a good news right there, that that's okay, that 4 and 20 is okay because it means we multiply both sides by a 4. Then she went ahead and added a 31 and a 31. But because she has the both sides, that's going to be okay. As long as you do the both sides, it's going to work. So this is a true statement because she multiplied by 4, and then she added 31 to both sides. By doing that, she kept the equation uh, comprised of two equivalent um, expressions. All right, number five. Elena and Lynn are trying to solve 1 half x plus 3 equals 7 half x plus 5. Describe the change that each make to each side of the equation. So Elena's first step. She's, everyone's starting here. <coughs> so what is she doing? We can see she has taken <coughs> the 1 half x from this side and subtracted it over there. So she has subtracted 1 half x from both sides. Can you do that? Sure. That's what she did first. For Lynn, we see that there's no subtraction, but everything seems to have changed. The x has changed, the 3 is double, the 7 is now just a whole number, and the 5 is double. So what's happened here with each of these values is she has multiplied everything by 2. right? And that makes the fraction go away, makes that 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 5 is 10, and makes that just 7 right there. <laughs> so that's what she did. Let's look at the back side, number 6. <laughs> Solve each equation and check your solution. So here we go. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead first of all and rewrite this 3x minus 6. Then we'll distribute 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12x minus 8x. Okay, let's group some things together here. So we we'll keep 3x minus 6 equals 8 minus, now I have a 12 and I have an 8, they're both minus, that becomes a negative 20x, okay, and we're going to go ahead and back up my kitchen real quick, and we're going to add 20x to this side, 20x to this side, so we have 23x equals, let's add 6, add 6 equals 14, we divide both sides by 23, so x equals 14 20 thirds. Let's take a look at the next one. Here we have fractions, we have halves out in front. So it's easiest to multiply everything by two. Multiply this by two, that times two, and then I also multiply the number on the outside of the parentheses by two as well. This is eliminated, so I have just z plus two times six is 12. Two times three halves is simply three, and I keep the z plus six in the parentheses alone, leave it alone. 
Now I can distribute this, so I have z plus 12 equals 3z plus 18. I subtract z, subtract z, so we have 2z. Subtract 18, subtract 18, and we have negative 6. Divide by 2, so negative 3 equals z. And that's my solution for the second one. And this last one here, I'm going to go ahead and let's add 7w to both sides. So we have 15w. Let's subtract 8, subtract 8, and we have 1. And we divide both sides by, subtract 8, yeah, we both divide both sides by 1. And divide by 15, sorry, and 1 15 equals w, just like that. All right. And that is it. Okay, so we have W equals 1 15th. Finally, let's look at number 7. It says the point negative 3 comma 6 is on a line with a slope of 4. Find two more points on the line. Write an equation for the line. All right, so a couple things we can do here. First of all, the slope is going to be 4. To show that that's true, we could say that an equation, one equation for this, this could be using the points we have. Y minus the Y value over x minus the x value, which is 3, equals our slope, which is 4. So that can be rewritten as y minus 6 over x plus 3 equals 4. That's one way I can write that out there, if I chose to. <laughs> okay. Then, if I want to find another point for this, I can substitute any number I want for x to put something in there. So for example, let's say x was equal to 0. Almost like making a t-chart here, x and y. So if x is 0, and I put that in there, I have y minus 6 over 0 plus 3 equals 4. So that becomes 3. Multiply both sides by 3. y minus 6 is going to equal 12. We add 6, add 6, and y equals 18. So there's another point for there. Okay. And if I wanted to find another one for uh, another point, it wants 2, we could do 1. So we could also do y minus 6 over 1 plus 3 equals 4. And we have y minus 6 over 4 equals 4. That becomes y minus 6 equals 16. We add 16 to it, and we have y or 6 to it. y equals 22, and that's my other point. So there's two points right there, just setting up the equation like so. All right, that's it for today. Hope you have a good one, and we'll see you next time.